Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with a very quick and easy watercolor tutorial for you by request. Um, I was asked to paint a magnolia quite a while ago um, from a viewer, so I thought I would do that this morning. I am the first one up in this quiet household, so I figured it was a great opportunity to get this tutorial done before the busy Sunday begins. Um, so I'm just clipping a um, watercolor card down to my piece of foam core, and we're going to begin with a sketch. and. Um, Watch the tip of my pencil here. I'm going to draw an oval here. This is going to represent where my flower is going to be. I'm drawing that really light, so if you just look at the tip of my pencil, you can see where I've drawn it. Now in the center, I'm going to put the center of my magnolia, which is kind of like a, almost looks like a Christmas tree, light bulb type shape. And then I'm going to throw in this large dominant petal in the back. Kind of has a little curved petal there, so I'm just sketching that in. I'm going to put in this larger one out to the side. I want to put this one in here towards the front that is kind of turned up a little bit. Magnolia petals have such a, a lovely shape to them. I'm going to put in another one over here that's very similar to that. You're kind of seeing the side of it. One in the front. And I never draw the flower the same way twice, so they'll always be a little bit different. This isn't going to be exactly like the one I just um, showed you. It'll be a little bit different, but that's all right. That's kind of how it how it goes each time you draw something new, unless you're tracing a pattern, which you can do if you uh, really like a sketch. You could sketch it out onto a copy paper and then um, copy it out each time you want to do it. I think I want this flower to be a little bit this uh, petal to be a little bit longer here. There we go. And I can actually leave that little turn in there. And I think I want that one out a little bit more extended. And then I'm going to put in a couple leaves to balance it out. And I think I'll also put in maybe a branch. Okay. And I'm going to use my soft white eraser that I uh, mentioned in my last watercolor tutorial just to uh, soften any lines and erase any ones I don't really need. And I'll just brush that off over the floor. All right, now we're gonna wet the background with a large flat brush. I like to use a number eight, I mean, I'm sorry, a uh, number 12 or one inch wash. Actually a 12, no, three, this is a three quarter inch wash and number 12 is actually a half inch wash, so I'm just going to wet the paper. And um, you can see my palette over here. I'm going to use some uh, Cad Yellow. I'm just going to throw that in in the background. This is a wet into wet wash, so all my edges are going to be nice and soft. I'm going to use some Sap Green in here. Don't go over the flower area with the Sap Green because uh, you want to keep that fairly light, but you can go over the leaves if you want to. Just try to leave the petals uh, try to leave them alone, and I'm going to use a little bit of gray that I'm going to mix up with some burnt sienna and some ultramarine blue. Got a little green on my brush already, but that's all right. It's going to blend in anyway. And I'm just going to throw in some darker areas towards the bottom of my canvas or paper, as the uh, case may be. And if you want, you can even throw in some uh, some watery ultramarine blue on its own. I like to add a lot of the colors that I'm going to be using. Um, on these first stages. That way it just kind of makes everything go together. Now if I tip it, you can see where all my colors are. Now if you do get any green or blue on the petals themselves, you can take a tissue or paper towel and you can blot them. I think I did a pretty good job here. I do have a little bit over there, so blot that up a little bit. And then um, you can use a hair dryer or a heat tool to dry it, or you can just let it dry um, on its own. I'm going to use my heat tool, dry it, and be back in a second. Okay, that's dry. I've switched over to my um, round brush and there my furnace is on again, but I'm going to keep on rolling. I'm going to set my palette up. I'm putting some um, alizarin crimson, some ultramarine blue, some cadmium yellow, some burnt sienna, and I already got some sap green there, but I'll put a little bit more out. And there, those will be the colors that we're using today. We're going to stick to those colors. We have five. And um, I'm going to start by um, painting the center 
area. I'm just wetting it slightly and I'm going to pick up my yellow, cadmium yellow towards the top, and my burnt sienna towards the bottom. If you feel like you have too much um, water on your brush, just, just set your brush against a paper towel. And then I'm going to take my secret tool here, my cut up piece of credit card. It's everywhere you want to be. And I'm going to slide, just kind of scrape in the details at the bottom of that um, of that flower. You can see that there. That's really all you need to do right there for now. And then um, I'm going to mix up some color for the magnolia. Now magnolias can be white or they can have kind of a purple to, uh, tinge to them. I really like the purple so I'm going to mix up um, some ultramarine blue and some of my crimson and get that nice um, plum color that we'll use for the flowers. And we're also going to have a lot of that warm yellow on the flowers too. So we have to be very delicate so that we don't um, have too much yellow and purple overlapping because then we'll get mud if we do that. Um, let's see, i got to look at this. This petal is in front, so I just want to make sure I have a little erased, a uh, pencil mark there that I probably should have erased. But I want to get some of these warm um, yellows towards the... Um, the interior of the petals so it's kind of like um, the light is reflecting off the stamen color and giving us this yellow. Now that I've placed the color in I'm actually rinsing off my brush and dabbing it off and now I'm going to spread it and blend it a little bit. You can, go in, you can use a bigger brush. I've got a number six round here. If you want to use your number ten round go for it. Sometimes I just like to put the color on and then start blending it around with a uh, just a damp brush. It gives me a lot of control and it helps me um, when I don't want to put too much color down, it helps me really control that. Now if I feel like I have too much, I can always just kind of dab it a bit with my um, with my paper towel or tissue, but that gives it a nice glow if I tip it away from the light there a little bit. I think I might just keep my hand under here because I feel like I'm getting a lot of glare from one of my lights, but when I move it, I don't seem to get enough light. All right, now while that's drying, I'm going to go to the green and I am going to paint in my leaves. You could wet the leaves first, but um, you don't really need to. It's up to you. And I just got to remember what's a petal and what's a leaf. That, that gets me confused sometimes. There we go. And if you want, you can use your um, credit card or the back of your brush to scrape in details on the leaves. Now this is kind of cool. I'm going to add, um, let me just put the other leaf color in here. I'm going to add some shadows to the leaves by using that purple mix um, because it'll actually give me a decent um, a decent shadow because red and blue make the purple and red is actually the opposite of brown but I don't want to just use red because I'll get kind of muddy color. So if I use, if I mix myself up a nice dark purple then I will get a really nice um, nice shadow in there. It'll just have a very, very lively shadow, which is kind of what I like. I don't like just to have like black holes in my work. I like to have nice lively shadows. Maybe a little bit more blue there. But that's up to you. If you don't, if you don't like that, then you don't have to do it. This is something that I like. I like to have that unexpected bit of color in my paintings. Even if it's just a little card like this, it still gives me a little bit of a little bit of a liveliness that you wouldn't necessarily have and I'm just kind of dabbing and dripping the color in there and letting it do its thing. That's a great thing about watercolor. It will really do some fantastic stuff if you just leave it be and let it do its thing. And since I have so much color in there I think I will grab and actually I saved this. This is from a scratch art kit. My kids are doing all this scratch art. I got a good deal at uh, Oriental Trading on some scratch art and so um, each little kit that I bought had like 12 scratchers in it because they were like classroom packs. And I was saying, ooh, what can I use those for? And I'm like always saving junk. I have like probably a dozen saxophone reed cases <laughs> that I think I'm going to make some jewelry out of. And so I was taking these. I'm like, oh, I bet I can make hair sticks out of these scratchers. And this morning I was having my coffee and I was looking at these. And I was like, you know what? I bet those would be just great for describing texture into a um, into a painting. It would be a little bit thicker than using credit card, but thinner than using the scrapers on the back of some of my brushes. So um, so there, this is me using it for the first time right here with you guys. Um, pretty cool. I got a little bit of a blob there. I think I will lift it. 
Okay, now I'm going to go on to some of these petals that, um, and I've got a little bit of a spill there. I'm not that worried about it. I'd almost just want to leave it because I kind of like what the paint's doing, but I'm going to blot it out just because I want this to look halfway decent because I'm doing a video and I, <laughs> I want to, you know, make sure you're going to get what you want out of it. Um, now I'm going to add some of this pale purple that I made with the crimson and the ultramarine to the edges of some of these leaves. I kind of, it's kind of a little um, anti-intuitive. Usually you have your darker colors in the shadow areas, but I found, now I don't have any magnolias growing around here because I'm in Maine, but um, whenever I look at pictures of magnolias, it seems like if you've got some purple on it, it seems like the insides of the flowers are more of your golden buttery yellow and the outsides tend to have the pinkish, um, pinkish purple. So that's kind of what I'm trying to achieve here. I'm also trying to not spill into all of that, um, <laughs> that color I just put on those leaves. In fact, I probably should take a break and, and uh, dry it. Let me blend out these colors that I've just put on. Then I think I will dry my paper. Oops. Yep. See, I just got into that. I think I'm going to have to dry it. Let me just soften out any colors I've already put on first though. That, that crimson will tend to stain a little bit more than any of the other colors I'm using, so I want to make sure that I don't have any hard edges. All right, I'm going to dry this, so we'll be back and we'll finish this up. i got to get those leaves under control there. They're just bleeding everywhere, so let me dry it and we'll be right back. All right, that'll be a little easier for you to see, too, because I won't have all that glare. All right, so back to the, the purple that we mixed. We're going to use that. By the way, I'm going to show you my water bucket here. Look how one side's really yucky and one side's really clean. I always have two buckets of water or a divided bucket like this. I use one side to wash my brushes and the other side to pick up fresh water for my um, for my using on my paint to mix and stuff like that. So that's a little tip for you. That was one of the first tips I learned. and I sometimes forget to share that because it's so uh, second nature, but you really want to do that. It'll make a big difference in your painting. All right, I want to make sure that petal gets divided and separated from the other one a little bit. I'm just using the ever so slightest, smallest bits of paint. Use a little wet brush to drag that over it. And now I'm just putting that in there because I need that definition. Not that the, you'd really have that purple on the inside of the petal. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit over here. It's a kind of a balancing act, just getting, because we're painting a flower that's essentially white or very light. So we want to just get little hints of color in there. And really, you don't need to do too much to a magnolia. I'm gonna dab in a little bit of, um, red and burnt sienna around the top to kind of add the uh, little details to the tip of the stamen there and also just kind of darken up the bottom a little bit. And I want to put in a branch so I'm actually going to grab some burnt sienna right from the cake of color and I'm going to paint in. This is really juicy because I'm going to blend some other colors into it. I'm going to paint in this stem. If you want more detail on your brush, use it at a 90 degree angle with your paper and you'll get much more detail. And if you get that color into the flower where it's still wet, then use a paper towel to blot it off or a Kleenex. Tissues work really well. I always have a box of tissues going over here and usually I'd forget to bring my paper towels over. So I've usually got tissues going instead of paper towels. And there we go. You can add a little green to that too if you want a little more complex of a color. And I try just to kind of drop it in and let it do its thing because you don't want to have mud. Even though this is brown, I'd rather have a lively brown than a muddy brown. And maybe even add a little bit of yellow to that to add a little bit of a highlight. And the key is less is more. Don't overdo it. Um, I know it's hard to, I had a, a viewer ask, when do you know when to stop, Lindsay? I always do the one extra thing and then it looks horrible. Um, Stop before you think you're done and look at it the next day and then your brain will tell you what you really need. Now I, I like to add some like kind of flecks of color. If I feel like I haven't had enough, I haven't represented a certain color enough in a painting that I'll fleck some color on. I really wanted some more of that lavendery pink kind of color. So I'm going to fleck on some of that. Maybe even go to a bigger brush so I can have some bigger splats of color. Get it nice and juicy. And, uh, you know, sometimes if I feel like I don't have enough green or yellow, that's the color I put in. Um, and I'll put in several colors. I just, whatever I feel like this picture needs, I will fleck it in. If you don't like this, you don't have to do it. This is complete, um, it's completely voluntary whether you do this step or not. 
I happen to like it, but if you feel like you've just painted a masterpiece and you really don't want to risk ruining it, then don't do it. You know, that's absolutely fine. Well, there you have it, painting a magnolia. Don't forget to sign your name or your initials because you work so hard. You totally deserve to put your name on that. Um, and I'm just going to put my initials. I don't like to put it right in the middle. I think I'll put them right over here. And if you hold your brush at, I have too much water on here. If you hold your brush at a 90 degree angle, you will get much more control over it for printing. And I'm too much water over here, but that's all right. I kind of like that juicy look. But there you go. There you have it, a magnolia in watercolors. Please try it. Have fun. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll help you out. And if you do like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share it. And um, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.